start here with the minutes of the last meeting, I guess. Anyone have any corrections or points that they want to bring up regarding those minutes? So moved. Mr. Chairman, the only thing that I noticed in the minutes, I'm sorry to interrupt, Ian. Oh, that's um, fine. At the very end of the minutes, the reason given for the Hildebrand severance, just let me get to it here. Okay. Was that it was going to be a building lot in a in a tier two settlement area, Straffordsville. It should read a building lot in a tier three settlement area, North Hall. Okay. But that was the only thing that I noticed. Sorry, Steve, what what item was that? That was uh, E10 mm -hmm. uh, 20, uh, Hildebrand. And at the very end of the minutes for that, uh, that application, it says purpose of consent, and it says residential building lot within a tier two settlement area, Straffordville. It should read within a tier three settlement area, North Hall. Tier three settlement area, North Hall. Page, yeah. page 21. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that's page 20. Okay. Okay. okay if there's nothing other. Mr. Chairman, technically yes. that, we didn't have recorded votes on any of that. I know we, we signed the paper, but recorded vote, you need, that's a special procedure. But that, excuse me, Mr. Chairman. Yeah. Was that not called a recorded vote, Steve, when we all had to say yes? Yes, you did. And so the, the, those recorded votes are all in the minutes. Yes, because we didn't sign. We all had to go to through. Uh, through the internet. Yeah. Through the internet. Yeah. Yeah. Called a recorded vote. On uh, yeah, I call out a recorded vote. They do that for county council as well. All recorded yes. votes. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Okay. So if no other questions, Ian has moved. The minutes. Do we have a seconder? I'll second. Rosemary. All in favor? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. One second, Chair. I'm going to share my screen so we can see um, the agenda as we go along. Just think, give me one second. Okay, we're all in favor here. You in favor too, Jack? Yes, I am. Okay, that's carried unanimously. Nancy is just doing something here, if we give her a minute. Trying to share the agenda at the very least. Okay, so. Okay, our next item on here is the uh, Lakeview Albro Bluffs, where they had a measurement discrepancy. So I want to bring before us. Mm -hmm. Yes, uh, if you don't mind, Mr. Chair, um, they approached me a few weeks, uh, about a week ago. Um, they indicated that at the original time of the um, consent, they had not done a survey. And of course, since that time, they had done a survey and had realized that there was some discrepancies, obviously, in the area and some of the frontages from the decision. So, uh, because they're uh, larger than what we would normally consider to be minor, uh, they have brought back the amendment. So, um, as you can see from the uh, from the package, um, I highlighted what the changes are from that. Um, um, decision. Just go to it really quick here. Uh, let me see. There we go. So the I've highlighted it as well on all the maps that have been provided. So there were um, the first would be the um, in place of 290 meters, a 285.34 meter frontage, a 15.69 hectare uh, parcel in place of 1602 hectares. And then the third being a um, 17.55 hectare parcel in place of 19.17 hectares. I can't remember the variance exact, exactly, but how far out are we on these? Um, the area is um, more significant. It's about two hectares for the for the uh, remainder parcel or the retained parcel. 
Um, but um, as you can see from the um, map that was originally provided, the survey that was originally provided, unfortunately it's upside down, but um, I think they just measured incorrectly is really what it came down to. I think the intent of the severance is exactly the same. Um, it's just a question of uh, the tools to measure were not done correctly. So I'm happy with the areas now that match the new dimensions. I understand that there was this error and I am happy with that. I do understand. I think it's minor from that perspective because I do think it's just an error on the on the part of the of the applicant when measuring. Yeah. I don't think there's anything nefarious about it. I don't think they're trying to, you know, change anything because the actual reference plan you can see on the next page, it looks the same as the severance that originally had been done. It just I think they just missed a few things basically. Yeah, I, I, I agree. I just, it was just that I got really turned around or confused doing the calculations on the new dimensions. And it seemed to that the areas didn't change, but you say the areas are correct. now. They did, they changed. Yes, exactly. For both of the parcels, they changed. Okay. So it would have been, you know, uh, 15 and 16 or some uh, 17. They're now 19 and 16, so. Okay, thank you. Dennis? I have two questions, 300. Is that what we've tried to do with people when they've had measurement descriptions? Yes. Yeah. And they say that we've got a policy on uh, allowable variances. I thought we were always kind of loosey goosey on that. We actually have, I don't ever us recall saying we have a hard fast policy. Yeah, through yeah. you, Mr. Chair, it's actually in our application form, believe it or not. It's in the beginning part of that application form. It says if you are with um, outside of 1.5 meters or 3% differential, um, you need to, you will have to reapply or, or get an amendment. Okay. Basically. So it's interestingly enough, it's not technically policy, but it is in the, con the consent applications. Okay. So any other questions, concerns, regards to this? If not, do we have someone who wants to make a motion one way or another? Move. Move to accept the, Dennis has moved that we accept the uh, changes as they presented them. John Andrews will second. All those in favor? Aye. All right, everyone's in favor, it's carried. Uh, you, uh, Nancy, you will need to do a recorded vote for this one. Oh, okay. For, for all, the only reason is because they're not all committee members are present, so we have to record it. Okay. Okay, I will go through the vote right now then. Andrews? Yes. Fleck? Yes. O'Grady? Yes. Kennedy? Yes. Selden? Yes. Van Casteren? Yes. Uh, Aldrin? Yes. Motion carried. Six to nothing. Nothing, right? Seven, nothing. Seven, seven, seven nothing. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and it was moved by Dennis and seconded by John Andrews. Okay, great. Okay, I guess next is items for consideration that Nancy has brought to us here. Mm -hmm. um, let me just see if I can share this. Yes, great. So this is the agenda for the meeting uh, and this is the items that I brought forward. So obviously now with me taking over the secretary treasurer role for this committee, there are a few things I thought I'd bring up with the committee to see if there's any changes, if anybody has any appetite for any change. <coughs> Or if we, um, if there's anything that needs to change from a from the perspective of the how the committee operates. So the first item that I wanted to bring up was the site visits by committee members. I know that um, it's a requirement that each of the committee members go out to determine if the signs are properly installed on each of the sites. Um, given this day and age, uh, one of the things we do send out with the package is a. Um, like a sheet that says uh, the applicant is required to install the signs and, and then they send that sheet back. We could do something where we have them provide photos as well to ensure that those signs are installed. So I'm just uh, wondering if the committee would like to continue to do these site visits if they feel it's it's beneficial or if you would prefer to sort of do away with that process and instead uh, leave it uh, in the hands of the agent or the applicant. Um, Mr. Chair. Uh, okay. John Sheldon. Sorry, thank you. And, and please excuse me for not going to you first on the last question. 
Um, I, I'm a, many of you know your areas even better than I, far better than I know my own, but I'm a real believer in trust but verify. It, 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 it's tempting to go to just to the pictures, but if you're gonna to go to the pictures, I think we have to, they have to be signed off in some legal way to ensure that the, the pictures are the correct location. If we don't go and check it ourselves, uh, I, I don't think, at least for me, it gives me something concrete to look at compared to the, uh, and, and, and attach that to the application. So maybe I'm old school, but I still say trust and verify. I think the site visits are a requirement. Ian, you have a comment? I have, have site visits, I feel, are, especially for myself, new and in a rural area. I've had it a couple of times where a good visit, a, a, there was a silo on the property that didn't show up on the the map that we got or on that bus when you get looking at it and it's too big a site but you go and you look at it and you see well the lawn has been cut bigger and bigger and bigger but that could be reduced and it has been in the last year a couple of my have reduced because it was way too much side yard it wasn't part of the what should have been a residential lot and I just think it's worthwhile to see the site and what's there. I agree. I agree. Excuse and me. I guess my comment is I think it's important because, as Ian said, sometimes there's things missed. And I really don't think a lot of these cases anyone else has looked at the application other than committee members when they go to look at it. So I think you know, it makes things a lot truer. We get a better picture and everything. <laughs> Jack, do you have anything you want to say on that? I agree with everything that's been said, and I'll stick with the old adage that uh, picture's worth a thousand words, but seeing it in person is even better. Do you have any input, Steve? I know, Mr. Chairman. I, I think that the uh, Ontario Association of Committees of Adjustment do sanction uh, site visits. Um, it's certainly something that has traditionally been done in Elgin. I understand where Nancy's coming from. I mean, we are in a technology advanced stage now where we could do more things over the internet. And maybe this is something that we could revisit at some point in the future. Okay, thanks. Sure. Sounds like, or Dennis. Yeah, I'm okay with this. I'm just wondering, because I'm hearing the same thing that the picture's worth a thousand words sort of thing. And the one thing we don't do here is we don't show that picture. So when I go out to my site visits, I have a picture here on my machine. It'd be very easy to have that uploaded here so we could see a couple of perspectives. Because everybody's saying that it's important that we go there and we see it so we understand it. But there's only one person out of the whole committee which has seen that. So by having that photograph, then he, he or she can point out the things that we should be looking for or looking at. And you just take this out, take a picture, email it in, and we can see that. No, very good point. But along that line, though, if I could um, interrupt, Mr. Chair, if what I've been doing is um, going on Google Earth on every application, and looking at the screenshot from overhead to see where buildings are positioned and so on. Um, just practically speaking, when I went to the site visit that included Elmer Malahide this month, um, I don't know where I would stand to take a picture or two that would show the layout of the buildings as well as an overhead Google Earth shot. But having been there and seen it, and then look at the overhead shot from Google Earth. It makes it a lot it makes more sense. And Google Earth is good, but sometimes it's not very current either. I found in some of the pictures I've looked at. John That's Andrews, why. Do you, have yep. some, yep. do you have something you want to say, John? Just in my travels quite often, I'll see the sign, and I'll either slow down or have an eye, even if I'm out of South Pole. And I, I think you know sometimes it, it makes a lot of sense to see. I think it's worthwhile. So it sounds like this, that the committee wants to keep up with the site visits. The next 
thing here you have is information package for committee members. Yes, so um, the information package that I sent you, it's a PDF, obviously. I can see why we would get away from paper because that would be a monster of a committee agenda and must have been in the past. So um, I'm just wondering if there's anything else supporting wise that you would like to see in the package. I had initially sent you the application form separate. I feel like adding them to the package just to it and you can't get to the comments that you really want to get to or the notice for that matter. Um, but certainly maps or anything else, photos that were mentioned by um, uh, O'Grady, um, things like that. Is there anything else that you think would benefit you? Dennis? The one thing that, and I know you're new, and so it's gonna take some time to work out the bugs for you, I understand that. Um, but. I'm wondering if we could set a few guidelines. I don't like to see staff doing this work at 6.30 on a Tuesday night. And I know you didn't get out of here at 6.30, you got out of here much later than that. And so a lot of it was related to the fact that people are making little minor adjustments all the way along and they should have been scatter shot. And I'm wondering if we can give a little bit more guidance to help staff out that says, we've got to have all the adjustments in 48, 72 hours before this committee meets. Otherwise, we're stuck with the same thing. We've got six uh, versions of a 170 page document. And when I get the first version, I start to mark it up. Whoops, now I get the second version. Well, I mark it. Oh, now I get, oh, now I've got six versions all marked up. And I can't work that way. And it's not only for staff, it's for us as committee members to get these changes. So we have a little more time to look at them prior to our meeting. Yeah. Now I'd like to really set a time frame for it. I'd also really like to put a hundred dollar fee. If you should be submitting the document accurate the first time, it should be proofread. It should be accurate. And I know people make mistakes. That's fine. Um, but you know, I'd really like to see a time limit and a hundred dollar fee, because then you might think about rather than treating it as a draft that can be altered at any time, then you might take a little bit more time to make sure you've got your measurements right, you've got your data correct, you've got your maps correct, rather than saying, well, we'll send it in now, and I know I've got read up until literally 12 hours before the meeting starts to make adjustments to it. And staff will go ahead and do that because they always do that. Ian? i like to say that one thing, I think Nancy's done a great job on this. As we all know, some of these councils have been meeting, and as you saw from the stuff that Nancy's information she sent us, some councils only met this past, well, one met Monday night, one met, and they're all trying to juggle their sessions in. I know, in, for instance, my, my council weren't able to meet because there, something happened between the ladies home and it happens to be in Leamington. She lost contact with, the rest of them in Dun Dunwich area, so that didn't get analyzed. So they had to have to finally do a special the other day to get it here for her special meeting. And there's just things like that, I think, right now. We'll see this even off now that we get this COVID over. But right now, <coughs> our trying, we saw how it's trying to get set up here too at times. Things aren't always smooth. And when you lose a contact with your planner that's way off and another county it's a difficult thing to get back and get the paperwork done john you wanted to... uh, yeah, thank you mr chair um I, I i agree with you completely on that Ian. um and i was wondering should we take a look at our our meetings i really appreciated you putting in the suggestion for the meeting dates uh right to the end of the year that's a great help but should we start coordinating our meeting dates so that we come along with dennis's idea so that we don't have a meeting until 72 hours or a week or a full working week after the last council meeting that's going to be held. Can, can it be coordinated that way? And that way maybe we'll avoid that. Mr. Chair, I just, most of the councils were working on it, but now that we've gone through this staffing change in that, but before that, they always had everything. They knew when the meeting was, they knew when they had to have all the reports in and the, the agents knew when they had to get it in. But now, as I say, with everything, we were supposed to have a meeting, one meeting, and then it got canceled in March. Then we had one in May, and then we did it till this month. So we've had a bit of a change for everybody. Yes. Nancy? 
I just want to point out that a lot of the uh, reasons that the package was sent out six times is because there were literally errors noticed in the notice. And that is not on the applicant. That is completely on me and my ability to do notices apparently in my first time. So unfortunately, I do want to apologize because that is not something that I want to obviously have continue to be done in the future, but um, for this particular package. Um, and that's why it's really helpful actually to uh, discuss when notices go out uh, the first time, if there was a way to sort of a check and balance, I guess you could say, just to make sure that those notices are correct, that you have everything that is needed for the package. So we don't have this uh, follow up with six package, um, you know, six packages. So, um, you know, if there's any way to do that, that'd be great. But it's, it's David, we're still talking about something else. Can you maybe mute your mic? Okay, I'll do that. Thank you. Thank you. Just trying to get it all hooked up here. So. Yeah, no problem. Okay, we've had a lot of points brought up here, and um, Ian made the point that councils and everything are out of whack, but Dennis's point also maybe of putting a deadline on this maybe carries some merit. So. I'm wondering if we should maybe think about this and bring this back for further discussion as to what direction we want to go on this. Dennis, you have something else? Yeah, I, I'm in agreement with the municipality stuff. We can't control the council. I'm more concerned about the individuals who've made a mistake. That one that we just approved, perfect example. You know, that had nothing to do with council. That's the fact that he submitted a sketch and said, oopsies, now that I've hired a surveyor, it's wrong. So that's fine. Mistakes are made. But don't make your lateness our responsibility. And so I'd be okay if even for the time being, um, and you can certainly discuss this with the chair, even if we say in the future we require everything or we encourage things to be in five working days prior to our meeting. So don't make it a mandate, don't make it firm and fast, but let's start warming up the consultants and the landowners to the fact you've got to get it in. And if it still becomes a problem, you know, when you mandate it, yeah. well, you charge them a hundred bucks, and then you'll find out that they'll meet the deadline. Right. They'll meet the deadline in a hurry. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. So, would we be okay with the idea of bringing this back to another meeting with our ideas yep. and maybe set some guidelines at that point? Yes. Okay. So we will bring that to them. I guess. And the final item uh, was final the item committee meeting dates. Yes. So I attached the schedule. So. Right now, I've already changed the deadlines for these meetings. They were previously four weeks before the meeting. I have to change that to six. It gives us just that extra cushion uh, to review and then send out notices, the pure later packages with the signs, et cetera. So on this committee, um, sorry, the schedule as well, I've also put down the uh, council meetings for the rest of the year for all of your local municipalities. So we're making sure that if we do have set the dates for these schedule, these meetings, sorry, um, that they are at a time that we can reason, reasonably expect to be provided with comments from the local municipality. So I don't really see any issues with the August meeting at this point. It looks like um, everyone will be able to provide their comments. Um, the last date will probably be, we'll probably receive something as um, August 20th from Bayham and Malahide. Those, that's when they meet. Or Bayham is the only meeting once in August, so that's why. Um, and then September and October, I don't think we have any other conflicts that I can see. Um, so with the council, uh, sorry, with the committee's permission, um, I could post this sort of a schedule online so people are aware of the committee dates that are coming up. And we can actually put those deadlines as well on the web page so people are aware. I have a question. The December one, mm -hmm. the 23rd, can it not be changed to the last Wednesday of the, of the month? Absolutely. Uh, that's something we can. I'm only thinking it's two days before Christmas and are people going to want to come in here? 100% that would, we could probably adjust that to the 16th if everyone was agreeable to something like that. You wouldn't move it to the end of the month? Oh, the 30th, you mean? Yeah. Oh, we're closed in between Christmas and New Year's, I believe. So, yeah, yeah. And, <laughs> I'm, well, I'm, I'm just thinking for selfish office, reasons. But registry offices are closed mm -hmm. oh. the 22nd. So I we added. probably won't be able to. Oh, okay. Because that's probably the one I'll miss then. Okay. Yeah. Did we not 
sort of change things around a little bit last year or this year where we had something a little bit earlier in January to sort of cut up the slack. What did we do this year? Does anybody remember? Because I thought we made a few adjustments there around Christmas. The same. We met the sort of first part of January and then didn't meet to the end of February. Yeah, something like that. Yeah. I'm fine to meet on the 16th and that way we'll have anybody that's got paperwork. If you're no one, they can get it in anyway. I would agree with the 16th. Yes. And keep everything near the end of the month. Yeah. Okay. Sorry, the Thursday. Oh, sorry. I'm on the Wednesday. I'm the wrong year. 16th. <laughs> okay. So everyone. Oops. Dr. Chair. I if it is on the 16th, is the party we had planned for the 23rd a on or off? I'm going to back it up. <laughs> Adjustments can be made, John. <laughs> Mr. Chairman, didn't I recall it wasn't somebody curling or something? Didn't somebody have a conflict on Wednesdays? Um, Nobody? Nobody's got a curling conflict. It's the best for me. Okay. Okay. Mr. Chair, if I could ask a question, it's Jack. Yeah. Um, going back, Nancy, to your uh, question number two, did you get answers to your questions there? Uh, we're going to actually discuss it at the next meeting from what I understand. So uh, I'll put it back on for the August meeting and we can have a bit more of a discussion about guidelines. At that okay. Time. Okay. Maybe Fair enough, thank you. Give us some options, but then you'll have gone through everything cycle once and give us some options of what you think is we need and and uh, what's redundant what's duplicative okay so everyone's good with the meeting schedule with the one change in december yep yes yes okay and we have a full schedule for the august meeting right now we have about uh, six items yeah. there's lots out there you know, I gotta say, I'm glad you brought this forward, Nancy, because knowing a little bit ahead what dates we're meeting is very beneficial. Yes, I agree for, for everyone. Okay. So that's the end of the business we have to deal with. Do we need to vote on that? No, a lot of that was just direction, Great. I think. Okay. So I guess we're on to the applications now. Yes. So is our first applicant with us here? Is David, are you on the line? Yes, I am. Okay. I'm on video, I guess, so. Yes, you are. In the right page here. Okay, so. David. Timer. Hotel bill. It's David Rowe, though, that's on video, right? Yeah, I'm here. Just trying to find what I got to read here. So, okay, so this is revised application E1120, Bill Reimer, for consent pursuant to Section 53 of the Planning Act 1990, as amended to several lands municipally known as 140 Elk Street. Legally described as lots 85, 86, 87, and 88, concession six, SRT municipalities of Elmer and Malahide. The applicant proposes to sever a lot with a frontage of 35.813 meters along Elk Street, 140 Elk Street, by a depth of 50.292 meters and an area of 1,894.4 meters, containing one dwelling, a metal clad garage, one frame shed to remain in residential use. The owners are merging the retained portion, 15.65 hectares with 46.639 Talbot line, 72.45 hectares, retaining a total of 88.11 hectares or 217.72 acres proposed to remain in agricultural use. So if you are there, David. You want to speak yes, I am. Yep. explain this to us, please? Yeah, what uh, the parcel in question being severed is a residential house located on Elk Street in, in Elmer, uh, fully connected to municipal services. Attached to that, <clears throat> that property was a, a chunk of agricultural land 
So what we're doing is severing off the, uh, the house, and the lands that are within the town of Elmer, uh, retaining the lands that are in Malahide, and then the retained lands we've amalgamated with the, uh, an adjacent uh, uh, large agricultural parcel, which uh, has frontage onto both Talbot Line and Hacienda Road. So uh, <clears throat> the retained land is a contiguous, uh, large, fairly large agricultural parcel, uh, basically just splitting the property along the uh, uh, legal boundary between uh, Elmer and uh, and Malahide. So uh, that's basically it. The house is there, services are there, and uh, it's not treated as a surplus uh, farm severance, house severance in that uh, the house is actually located within the settlement area of, uh, of Elmer. So it's uh, just strictly a severance at this point. Okay, any committee members with any input? No. Jack, your area, do you have anything to say? Nope. Okay, if we have no comments, what is committee's wishes on this one? Sorry, Mr. Chair, I was on okay. mute. All right, do you have any comments in regards to this, Jack? Just that I visited the site and uh, it's pretty much a no-brainer. Um, the way it's presented is accurate. It's good. Okay, thank you. So John Andrews originally moved that we accept it. Seconder, did you have something you want to add, John? I just want to ask, was uh, Mr. Chair, is there any need for an uh, uh, an MDS on this property? Is there no? There was no, not a barn or a problem with that. There was uh, no. Uh... Uh, livestock barn or buildings capable of being used for livestock purposes. District grade is using. Okay. There is there is a an older barn that probably did house livestock at one time. So the on the retained is. on the Malahide portion, the the farm build the farm building sits there. Yeah. Okay. yeah. The, uh, the Rhymers don't have any livestock and in, in that barn, uh, I don't think would be capable really of housing livestock today. It did probably once upon a time, but it's long ago, I'm sure. I would agree. <laughs> Thanks, Mr. Chair. Okay, so are we still, the committee still? Yes. Okay, so John Andrews moved it, Ian Flex seconded that we accept this application as it was presented. Mr. Chair, could I add one, yes, one Chair. more question? Yep. Um, in the uh, revised application, just a clarification on the description. Um, the lots 85, 86, 7, 8, concession 6, SRT, I believe that should be STR, South Talbot Road, should yes. it not? All right, STR. Yeah. I don't know, I had no idea what SRT meant. So oh, I think you're right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's just a small clerical error maybe, but SRT, I have no idea what it means, but STR is South Talbot Road. Yes, it is. Okay, thanks, Jack. That's here. Correct. That's right. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, so we have this motion. Now we need to have a recorded vote, I guess. Nancy? Second. Okay. So this is a recorded vote to accept the application? Yes. Okay. Uh, Andrews? Yes. Fleck? Yes. O'Grady? Yes. Kennedy? Yes. Selden? Yes. Ben Casterin. Yes. And Aldred. Yes. Motion carries seven to nothing. Okay. The decision rendered today for application 11 E1120 will be circulated within 15 days after the notice. There is a 20 day appeal period from the giving of the notice of a decision in which any person or public body may appeal the decision or any condition imposed. If no appeal is received within 20 days of the giving of the notice, 
the provisional consent becomes final. The applicant has one year to meet the conditions imposed and submit the necessary documents for certification or the consent will lapse and a new application will be required. Please leave the identification signs in place until the appeal period ends after which they can be removed. If you would like to be notified of today's decision, request a copy by contacting Nancy Passato at npasato at elgin.ca. A copy of the comment package is also available upon request and includes all correspondence received. Thank you. Thank you. Chair, may I ask a question? Yes, please. you may. Do you sign these decisions now or um, after? If it's a recorded vote, do we sign? Oh, okay. That's helpful. Yeah, I don't you have to do that, Nancy. I don't have to do, we don't have to do the decisions. I, I, I don't think I don't think signatures are required as long as you have in the minutes that there was a recorded vote. That's right. Okay. okay. Thanks, Steve. Thanks, Steve. So. You can start the next item if you'd like. Okay, we'll move on to the next item. Our representative for this one with us on the Christensen one. Mr. Christensen, are you on the call? Can you hear me? Yes, yes now we can. Okay. Application E12-20, Scott and Ruth Ann Christensen for a consent pursuant to section 53 of the Planning Act 1990 is amended to sever lands municipally known as 57220 Eden Line legally described as part of lots 23, 24, concession nine, municipality of Bain. The applicants propose to sever a lot with a frontage of 38.1 meters along Eden line by a depth of 61.903 meters and an area of 1,969.08 square meters or 0.48 acres proposed for a residential building lot. The owners are retaining 2.2 hectares or 6.96 acres containing one dwelling and one hobby farm proposed to remain in residential use. Could uh, Mr. Christensen or whoever is with us representing us, could you give us a little uh, explanation of your proposal here, please? Yeah, we're just uh, applying for a, a general uh, severance application for a, a building lot on uh, Eden Line, just west, uh, or, or sorry, in the of uh, Eden, uh, just wet, or sorry, just east of uh, Highway 19. Um, the request is just more or less an interest has by some local neighbors in the area and the municipality is encouraging development in this particular area. So we thought we would take the opportunity to uh, go through the process to uh, set up the application for severance. Uh, there's really not much more I can provide to you. Uh, I do have a suggested party that's looking at the lot. It's actually uh, a neighbor from across the road. Uh, that uh, family would like to to build a new road on this particular lot. And uh, originally we weren't intending on selling these lots off. They were just part of our property lands, but uh, we do uh, enjoy our neighbors in the neighborhood and, and like to keep them around. So uh, that being said, uh, it's just uh, it's just a general uh, standardized or standard lot that we're looking at at the moment. You will notice on the picture just to the east of that lot, uh, there is enough uh, square footage. It would be very similar to the the current severance application for a possible future lot if if and if and when we decide to to proceed. But uh, other than that, that's that's pretty well, that's pretty well about it. Okay, thank you. Any input from committee members? Dennis? Question on the original application, it showed uh, both lots were gonna be severed. So are, is the approval that we're looking at today just for the one lot? Uh, that's correct, it's just for the one lot. When they had, um, 
Oh, sorry. You want me to respond to that? Yes, please. Okay. So, yeah. So when we originally looked at it, when we had Mr. Reth come out from uh, NA Geomatic, look at the lot, uh, we had it kind of set up. He was, he was uh, looking at the possibility of a second severance. Uh, I just left the, the drawing as is for now, but uh, uh, if there's a future requirement for that second lot to be severed, then I would resubmit the documents at that point. So there's no, no okay, plans. Thank you. Point. Okay, thank you. Any further questions or comments from the committee? John Sheldon? Mr. Chair, um, is, is there not municipal water available? Or does it not come down nope. to your line? No, there is not. What about municipal sewer? No, it, it's just uh, it's sewage only for, for our area. Yeah, and uh, there is a there is a well that has been put on the uh, the severance uh, lot uh, proposal uh, by the uh, the interested um, individual that's looking at the lot. So it is currently well at the moment. Do you do you anticipate water coming in there? I, I saw that the well had been put in, but it seemed uh, odd to me. I've got I've got my own per, but uh, I I don't believe there's any uh, there's any um, uh, appetite at the moment to to run water down that way. But I'm only I'm only giving you my best guess. Okay, that's that's fair. Also, what's the minor variance that you're that that has to be addressed? Has that been done? Uh, no, so that came in the request uh, in the last uh, uh, letter that uh, was issued to me, I think, um, by the by the Elgin County uh, office, and it has to do with um, I, I guess the back of our pro uh, the back of our property is is um, is agricultural, uh, so I'm not I I still have to digging in on that to find out what the rationalization is for that minor variance request. So I, I'll, I'll, I'll need to get back with the, the, the penalty on. Thank you. Anything, Jack, do you have any input on this? Um, am I still on mute? No, no, no. Can hear you. no. Good, okay. I was just curious looking at the overhead sketch. Um, the uh, irregular um, boundary lines that were set compared to the neighboring properties are all straight back. Um, just wondered why this one was done on an angle like that. Mr. Christensen, can you? Yeah, it was, it was, it was done on an angle like that. Just to, to I'll, I'll call it for lack of a better term, to square it up to the, the house. So, the original angles actually went the other way at the back of the property, which encroached upon uh, our current residence. So we we just adjusted it from west to east uh, to to um, provide more space in between the, the existing residence and the covered lot. That sounds fine, Jack. I'm trying to make sense of that. Um, well, if, if you look, yeah, go ahead. yeah, sorry, if you look, if you look at it for, for, if you were, so if you, the original drawings that, that, that David put together, uh, in relation to the road, it would have the severed spot from road to back going from east to west. And if you see where the house is, uh, to the, to the left of the severed lot, that, that lot, that line would basically encroach upon the, the, the property itself where the existing home is. And oh, so I also, I also want to retain uh, access to the back portion of the property uh, to the west of that severed lot proposal. So that's, so from where the driveway is to the lot line of this proposed severed lot, I wanted to leave that open so I can actually be, continue to gain access back to the, the property. Yeah. Okay, I see what you mean now. And that if, does help. Yeah, that does help. So if the uh, if it was squared up like the properties to the east, let's say, 
then the frontage would be too narrow, I suppose. Uh, no, the the front if the frontage. So when the, when the um, uh, when the, the gentleman approached me about uh, being in, uh, they're looking for the frontage of a certain proportion. But if you took that line, the, the the line to the left, and and drew it kind of straight back uh, from the road, you it would it would definitely it would be in the back it would be in the backyard of my house. It would be in the back house. Yeah. So, but to, 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 to put it mildly. Yeah. Yeah, I understand. I was thinking of not the line starting from the road, but the line starting from the yard going to the road would be a straight line, but that's okay. I don't want to belabor the issue. I don't think there's any oh, yeah. problems with it. I just wondered why it was done that way and you've answered the question. Thank you. Okay. okay. Any further comments? Do we have a motion in regards to this? I'll move. moved. Dennis O'Grady will second. So. Recorded vote. Recorded vote on that. Okay. Andrews? Yes. Fleck? Yes. Brady? Yes. Kennedy? Yes. Selden? Yes. Van Casteren? Yes. Uh, Eldred? Yes. Motion carries seven nothing. Okay, the decision rendered today for application number E1220 will be circulated within 15 days after the notice. There's a 20 day appeal period from the giving of the notice of the decision in which any person or public body may appeal the decision or any condition imposed. If no appeal is received within 20 days of the giving of the notice, the provisional consent becomes final. The application has, applicant has one year to meet the conditions imposed and submit the necessary documents for certification or the consent will lapse and new application will be required. Please leave the identification signs in place until the appeal period ends after which they can be removed. If you would like to be notified of today's decision, please request a copy by contacting Nancy Passato at npasato at elgin.ca. A copy of the comment package is also available upon request and includes all correspondence received. Thank you. Can you hear that? Uh, yeah, I can, I, can, I can hear it a little bit. Yeah. I can hear it. <laughs> Okay. Thank you very much, Mr. Christensen. Thank you. a question yes we're not doing any of the comments that ever come in like you know how we used to do the comments from the county and the planner and everything but we're not oh yes yeah i forgot about that <laughs> i'm thinking this sounds short about this <laughs> thank you rosemary no problem that may be too long <laughs> no i can certainly summarize them with somebody else here rather than we of them that probably would help a lot so I'll, that one was being now it's helped a lot just here just get away from me all the smith technology now is steve gonna do the county ones are you doing them or who's doing them? okay okay so it are the health teams or their representatives? Helka, are the representative with us online? Yes, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Okay, uh, hi, my name is Helen Button. I'm uh, from Gunn and Associates. I'm just here on behalf of Doug Gunn. Um, Brian Vandenbrook had wanted to call in. I'm not sure if he's on or not. I am on the line. Okay. Okay. All right, so if everyone's with us, we'll proceed here. <laughs> Application E1320, Elvin Henry 
Helka for a consent pursuant to section 53 of the Planning Act 1990 as amended to sever lands municipally known as 46541 Helka Line, legally described as part of lot 22, concession nine, municipality of Central Elgin. The applicant proposes sever lands with a frontage of 14.6 meters along Helka Line by a depth of 80 meters and an area of 1,168 square meters or 0.289 acres. Proposed to add to the abutting parcel in order to convey land to accommodate an existing laneway, yard, and permit an expansion to a side. The owners are retaining 46.9 hectares or 122.56 acres proposed to remain in agricultural use. So if you would like to just explain. Excuse me, on the line, can, can somebody please mute that microphone? Mrs. Craig, Craigsman, I think it might be you, I'm not sure. Pardon me? Are you on the line? I'm hearing some noises. I'm wondering if you can mute your microphone. How do you do that? Um, well, there's a little button on the, it should be a little red button on that meeting. And it, it will have like a microphone looking thing. This is going to go quick. Just be quiet. Microphone looking thing. Do you see anything like that, guys? We're not the brightest bulbs on the tree when it comes to this one. <laughs> and I don't see a microphone. My little red dot that says meeting in progress. Okay. All right. That'll well, probably just... us out. We, we... Okay, we can hear you though. So just make sure if you can, please just um, try to be as quiet as possible. Mm -hmm. and then that way you can... okay, sure. Thanks. The grandkids just left us, so it'll be quiet. <laughs> Okay, so if representative or whoever yes. wants to make a statement here to us to explaining this severance a little, please. Yeah, um, so this is a, a application for a boundary adjustment. It's an addition to uh, 46595 Halka line, um, and it's adding an existing driveway and small piece of land um, that are already in use and maintained by, by the owners of of 46595 Halka line. Um, that piece is already subject to an easement in favor of that lot. Um, so it's it's just to add that on. It'll accommodate, as you said, the existing laneway and add a, a small portion of the land for a potential future shop expansion. Okay, thank you. Um, I guess we'll go to the comments from Nancy, which I missed on the first two, my apologies. I'll keep this brief. So from the manager of planning for the County of Elgin, um, uh, essentially this uh, subject site is uh, agricultural designation of the County of Elgin official plan. Uh, generally severances are restricted in the agriculture, agricultural area. However, uh, policies under the County OP also allow for boundary adjustments to existing lots provided no new building lot is created. In this particular case, that's what's occurring here. Um, Generally, the proposed severance application meets the policies of the county official plan and the county of Elgin supports the application for consent, provided the severed lands merge on title with the adjacent property at 46595. <coughs> okay. Okay. Any questions, concerns from any committee members on this? No. So I can do the summarize the central Elgin as well. Okay. Um, if you'd like me to. Um, Generally, they are also supportive of the application, Central Elgin, and they've included a list of conditions, which include uh, merging the property on title with the abutting lot, the abutting lot, um, noting that the amended shall uh, section subsection three or five of section fifty of the Planning Act will apply to any subsequent conveyance or transaction involving the subject lands. Uh, the solicitor for the applicant is to provide an undertaking whereby they inform the committee in writing that the lands are being conveyed to an abutting property owner and thus a merge of title will take place. And the municipality of Central Elgin will be provided with a copy of the reference plan and a drainage reassessment be done if necessary at the owner's expense. And then okay. I don't believe there are any other comments. The county engineer did not have any comments. Um, and the only other correspondence was from Gun and Associates asking for all correspondence. Okay, so if we have no input from the Committee, do we have a motion here? Second. Who's I move. I second. Okay, John, one of them. Everybody's hands going up at once. 
Vote must die. Okay. Recorded vote. Andrews? Yes. Fleck? Yes. O'Grady? Yep. Kennedy? Yes. Selvin? Yep. Van Casteren? Yes. Uh, Aldrin? Yes. Motion carries seven to nothing. Decision rendered today for application E1320 will be circulated within 15 days after the notice. There's a 20 day appeal period from the giving of the notice of decision in which any person or public body may appeal the decision or any condition imposed. No appeal, appeal is received within 20 days of the giving of the notion, notice. The provisional consent becomes final. <laughs> the conditions imposed Oh, no, the applicant has one year to meet the conditions imposed and submit the necessary documents for certification on the consent will lapse and a new application will be required. Please leave the identification signs in place until the appeal period ends after which they can be removed. If you'd like to be notified of today's decision, please request a copy by contacting Nancy Passato at npasato at elegant.ca. A copy of the comment package is also available upon request includes all correspondence received. Thank you. Thank you. Question when, when we're done. Okay, thank you. Dennis, you Questions on the gun letter. And uh, just, he wanted copies of any correspondence prior to, but there's an appeal period and there may be correspondence after. So do we stick to strictly what he's asking or do we inform him that uh, there's an appeal period, and if anything comes in, we would send it to him as well. Um, through you, Mr. Chair, we would, as a courtesy, send them obviously anything that was sent in. I don't know how much correspondence would come in after uh, a consent but, decision. Not likely. But in case it was, I would send it to the applicant as well if anything was received after um, as a courtesy. Um, but the, obviously, the notice will go out in due course. And um, he is listed as the agent for the class, so he will obviously receive a copy of that as well. Okay, thank you. Yeah, thank you. So that gets us caught up, and we have five or six minutes to spare here. Okay. Good. Anything else we need to discuss in our six minutes? Mr. Chair, is Steve still on the line? Are you still with us, Steve? He's gone. No, I'm still here. I was on mute. Sorry. <laughs> Go ahead. It's John Selden. I, I just on a personal note. Did, did you get the parcel I left for you the last meeting? I, I sorry, John. I haven't been back to the office since that time. Oh my goodness. <laughs> so uh, I, I, I haven't been in the office since the middle of March. Holy cow. Well, there's a, I, I left an item for you. Okay, I, I, I realize that you did that. I think it's been put in a safe place, but uh, I hope to get back in uh, within a few more weeks. <laughs> okay, I, I was just concerned maybe you hadn't gotten it. No, no, that, I think it's been uh, set aside for me. So that's good, John, thanks. Okay, thank you. Mr. Selden, he has several boxes in, my, in the office. <laughs> I, put it, I think I know what it is, and I put it in the files. Uh, at some point, he'll be in. <laughs> Everyone, hopefully it's okay, but I did not order lunch today, so oh. uh, hopefully that's okay. I, I assume people probably just wanted to get this. Done. Sure Hopefully, we can resume our whatever it is, uh, lunch breaks or what have you in the future. I don't know. I understand that you would break for lunch and then go out for lunch and then come back. Is that what would happen? Or if we met after one. If we met after. Uh, normally, yeah. we made the decision if we were going to be done by one, we would just Keep forge going. through till we're done and go yep. from there. But. And if we could save time, if we end the whole day meeting, I don't have any problem with eating downstairs. Exactly. Carrying on, make sure they have to bring lunch in. Yeah. Well, I mean, restaurants aren't going to be really be an option for a while, I think. So certainly, if that's the case. And meet to one because usually we've had coffee before. So. Yeah. I can tell you the next meeting will be 
I think um, our last item's at 11.15, so we're not going to have an issue. It's even better. Yeah. <laughs> I stop the tent, but they were lined right up. You should go to McDonald's. Right up Wilson, um, Elm Street there. Oh. You should go to McDonald's. Better coffee. <laughs> St. Thomas. <laughs> Everywhere you look, there's a street closed. Are they saving on air conditioning in here or what? No, I, I was see just that. wondering that. It is hot. The heat will kill the coronavirus. Or... <laughs> <laughs> That's an American theory. Yeah, and me too. I was like, maybe just because I have a blazer on, but God, oh, Andrew, comfortable. you notice on the 401, the first of August, you can't get off on Iona Road East or bound or north, westbound, and we're done. Really? After August or September. Yeah, well, so I guess we're talking this and we can't get out of, uh, on Wonderland. Well, we get out of Wonderland, but we can't get out. Of, our guys also used to get out of number four and get out of the road and go west. 401 is? No, 402. Oh, 402. But yeah, Wonderland's closed right straight so, through there yeah, right at your right. corner. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Because I have to go up through Harry White to get. Yeah. My acupuncturist is in North London, as Wonderland. Isn't there going to be a detour? I guess right. One of these, you can't go over the highway over the bridge on the 401. You've got to go up to Wonderland and take the detour. Oh, really? I think we've got six crews hired contracting now to work on the 401. Four and wow. yeah, the last item is at 12. Uh, are they bringing Wonderland right straight through? Clock out of that job? Are they? Yep, so that would have to go through your land, wouldn't it? Yeah, it's not going to happen. No, not for a few years. No money. The county's got to. What's the, what's the difference if you have to go up and around? The county's got to pay for that. Oh, really? Now it's state of the art. It's supposed to be the best road in the house. 10 foot shoulders. Really? But wow. they've got to put in, uh, they've already they've class two drains, so they had to, had to dig it. On they Wonderland? They had to dig it up. Uh, it was a terrible road. It's up and down. No, up and down. Code, actual, it's terrible. And our place they just got a pass. And now that they could have put a catch thirty four hundred dollars in there. Okay. That would be quite a drag because we put a speedway once in. Oh, it won't. At Wonderland Road, when you turn out to Wonderland off Landworth Road, you oh, gotta be true. awful, awful careful. I saw a car the other day there turned and there was nothing coming from the north. Around the Land with curve, right? It's it's right there. Deadly. In the wintertime, there's been many accidents. Yeah, but this is at Landworth Road in Wonderland. Oh, in Wonderland, the other side, the Wellington yeah. is the one that people talk about all the time. Oh, yeah. I never, when I lived in St. <laughs> so I never drove Wonderland or, I mean, Wellington or Highbury. Always took number four highway and into London that way. Highbury is a guy told me that different clientele, like the Highbury Ave is the guy getting out of the factory can't go fast enough. Okay, we can move on here. Are the Babcocks, are their agent with us on line? Does that one lady have to still be on? The Craigsman is? Good morning. Good morning. This is Pauline Craigsman. I have Glenn and Brenda Babcock with me. Okay, thank you very much. We will proceed here. Application E1420, Willis Glenn and Brenda Ann Babcock for a consent pursuant to section 53 of the Planning Act 1990 as amended to sever land municipally known as 6613 Soper Road, legally described as part of parks lot five and six 
registered plan 17 municipality of BAM. The applicants proposed to sever the lot with a frontage of 20.12 meters along Soper Road by a depth of 108.96 meters and an area of 0.68 hectares or 1.7 acres to create, now there was a correction on this, That's was right. there not? It, uh, through you chair, an area of 0.22 hectares or 0.54 acres was revised for the severed property. For the severed property, okay. And the owners are retaining 0.68 hectares or 1.7 acres proposed to remain in residential use. So would you representatives, would you kindly explain your severance to us a little here, please? Certainly. Um, as you can see from the sketch, there is an excess of land on Soper Road. That's a strip development area where the lots are yes. pretty similar other than this one. And so um, we felt that the highest and best use of this excess land would be to create another residential building lot. There is pipeline water available there. Um, there's ample room for a sewage disposal system. And um, we think we're probably in keeping with all the official plan and zoning requirements. Uh, Nancy, if you could read your comments there. Yeah. Uh, the subject lands are designated as a tier one settlement area in Vienna. The County of Elgin official plan. Full municipal services are generally available and new development is encouraged in these areas. Um, the proposed severance application meets the policies of the County official plan and the County of Elgin supports this application for consent and rec we recommend a, a nap, uh, sorry, condition um, that we have to be, has been advised that the Ontario building code requires confirmation of servicing, including an individual on-site potable water supply and or individual on-site sewage. The applicant has made the necessary inquiries of the municipality to determine the works necessary. That the applicant undertakes to advise any future purchasers of the above acknowledgement, and that the municipality confirms that there is sufficient sewage treatment capacity for the hauled sewage. There were no comments from the county engineer. He's not on a county road. The municipality of BAM also uh, recommends approval of this application and has asked for conditions including installation of municipal water system connection to the severed lot at the owner's expense. Municipal lot assessment for a private septic system, provide engineered stormwater management, drainage and grading plans, the purchase of a civic number sign for the severed lot, provide a digital copy of the registered plan of survey, cash in lieu of parkland dedication fee to the municipality for the created lot and planning report fee payable to the municipality. And those are all the conditions that were asked for. Any questions or comments from the committee? John Sheldon? Uh, Mr. Chair, I, just a, a technical thing. The BAM planning report has given the size of those areas for both severed and retained correctly, I believe. However, the, most of the material ahead of that shows the, shows the retained property at the same size as the severed property, and yet the retained property is much larger. So those numbers need to be checked or corrected if they're, if they, unless I'm mistaken. So that was uh, through you, Mr. Chair. That was noticed very late that uh, the notice had the incorrect, the application form was correct. Uh, okay, sorry. So that, and then uh, that's what one of the revised packages was, was the revision to that notice. Unfortunately, it was caught very late, but. Sorry, Ms. Scott, thank you. Rosemary? Is there a severed lot there at the very back? If you pull up that one map, it looks like there's a building at the back. back up. I didn't see that anywhere. So here? Yes, uh, if you look at the very back, that little white spot, is sure. there a building there? The applicants, did you hear Rosemary's question there on your severed lot? It appears from the overhead photo there's that there's a, a building at the back of the- Is there park. a shed? Trailer. It's it's just a, a a detached trailer sitting on the lot. Uh, okay. 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 Thank you. You're welcome. Any other questions? Zach, do you have anything you want to say here? Uh, no, no comments. Okay. So, if that's the case, how does the committee wish to move ahead here? 
I'll make a motion that be approved. Rosemary makes a motion approved. John Selden second. Okay, we'll do a recorded vote. Andrews? Yes. Fleck? Yes. O'Grady? Yes. Kennedy? Yes. Selden? Yes. Van Casteren? Yes. Aldrich? Yes. Motion carries seven to nothing. Decision rendered day for application E1420 will be circulated within 15 days after the notice. There's a 20 day appeal period from the giving of the notice a decision in which any person, public body may appeal the decision or any condition imposed. If no appeal is received within 20 days of the giving of the notice, the provisional consent becomes final. The applicant has one year to meet the conditions imposed and submit the necessary documents for certification or the consent will lapse and a new application will be required. Please leave the identification signs in place until the appeal period ends after which they can be removed. If you would like to be notified of today's decision, please request a copy by contacting Nancy Passato at NPASAPO at Elgin.ca. A copy of the comment package is also available upon request and includes all correspondence received. Thank you. Thank you. Great. Thank you for joining us. And thank you for hosting us. Bye. Yeah, no, okay.
the one where they don't give us any home farm location. This is the one where there's no home farm location left. It's very interesting. It's, it's listed on one page as a gate. Oh, that's where he lives. He that's lives. not where the property is. No, but he has you have to list where you Oh, where he lives, yeah. Where you're oh, he lives on Spring Avenue. Yeah, it starts where all Kings Mill. So uh, they're still further out with grading and drainage and wells and running. Well, they've got a well at the very top. I'm not sure if that's just to uh, check the groundwater contamination or something like that. Well, he, this is the old Fillmore property that he's dividing. I think Fillmore's used to own the property. I think they're going to have an entrance there, but they've got to have one on the bridge. Like those big fire trucks should be going up that hill and out there because they've got no room to turn onto Sunset. I think they've got to go out down by the garage. Oh, I, I have two houses on my. Property. It's a stupid location. Turn the one down. <laughs> really? Yeah, no, I didn't even know Ken owned this till the first. I don't know what they're putting up there. They should have just torn down that one. I think it's to his son, isn't it? Yeah, that's a pretty big lot in Union. Yeah, Tony. Yeah. But this is going yeah. to an excess farm. We're going to get a separate on another one. Because he's thinking separate from his mother's house. Whereas Anthony lived in his mother's house. Yeah, yeah, yes, yes. Anthony lives in Betty and you know, Yeah, I just. Oh, you know, yeah. And Betty now. Right on sunset. I mean, there's already a nice house. Some the traffic issues now. And that's before all the new subdivisions. So there were Rebecca's and we went and visited. Because I went to school with um, Ken's brother, Ron, who was killed on the railroad tracks. Oh, yeah, all that area around the water tower. It's all going to be subdivisions. You've just gone to. And then, you know, they've uh, got all that stuff in that oh. new one. I don't know the railroad track. Whatever it's called, Kokomo Beach or whatever. On the train headed. That's going in. Really? And he was just finished the EA for the sewers. Like this one? That sun's yeah. Yeah. It is very good. Going through is. Uh, From the, uh, the drainage, that drainage. Right. Like there's a uh, 200 lot. No drainage. indication. So what was she before? So they're running, they're going to be running uh, actually sewers all the way up sun. So yeah. That's all. Um, oh, we need it. Oh, so she's not from right around. I don't know who's building it. I never knew Ron had a girl. So that's going on. The applicant has indicated that the retained plans are to be consolidated. Yeah, he's oh, the applicant with the principal residence. Like that's a little bit ticked off because. So is Ken I younger then than representative. Should we not have a say? I didn't know what you I said, you're running the sewer lines up. I there. usually put it on my comments. That's the entire subdivision. Not in the application. Can't do that. I, or you can also ask them that. I'll that that's something. Oh, you're being committed to the problem. There's a menu girl. Yeah, to uh, make sure. Running no. to need to. Are you consolidating? Right, yeah. Absolutely. I can't think of your operations. That get, and he started, you know, saying, we need more uh, tractor. Neighbor's going to want to pay the cost. Yeah. And right then I knew. But the farm. I don't know what a brand new set of uh, Where is farm? Nice poor Betty. There's nothing. Exactly there. right. Yeah. It's about this high and about this bigger mm -hmm. and bigger than my client. It's an old age. Why well, you put uh, a couple of by all means four inch uh, big O and you're done. Put it in there. It's Package and so yeah. 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 She's in a nursing yeah. home, isn't she? Yeah. Yeah. Twenty Paris Lodge. Was in London. You know, and I've been around long. That's where I thought home. she went. You know, something's going to go wrong with my sewer, with my septic system. Yeah, they got Tom Girl in. It's all on my ticket. Finally. And the guy across the road. Subsidized septic system. Anything yeah. wrong with it? The yeah. trucks and the oh. city people over there. there and well, they built that house there, didn't they? they? I was in Betty. Because that used to be the old Mel Ashton. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So they moved down yeah, there. Uh, <laughs> keep wondering how many cars have driven in. Okay, it's 11 o'clock. We have a representative for the Stovers with us. Or I'm, yeah, I, uh, Dave Rowe. I'm here online. Okay, thank you, David. Application E fifteen twenty for Kenneth, Mary, and Anthony Stover for a consent pursuant to Section fifty three of the Planning Act nineteen ninety as amended to sever lands municipally known as five two three seven one Calton Line. Legally described as part of lots 28 and 29, concession three, Township of Malahide. The applicant proposes to sever a lot with a frontage of 31 meters along Calton Line, by a depth of 72.995 meters, and an area of 2,262.9 square meters or 0.56 acres, containing one residence 
surplus of the needs of the owners. The owner are retaining 60 hectares or 147.6 acres proposed to remain in agricultural use. So David, if you would like to explain this to us a little bit, please. Yes, uh, it's pretty well a standard uh, uh, severance surplus farm drilling. There was a previous severance uh, 2017 where we uh, severed the house to the east or to the right, if you're looking at the uh, sketch. Uh, now we're severing a half acre lot uh, with a house uh, uh, immediately beside that one. Other than that, it's uh, as straightforward as, as you can get. Uh, the uh, uh, owners uh, farm a fair number of acres, and uh, this uh, qualifies as a surplus farm uh, of severance. That's basically it. Okay, thank you. Any comments or questions from the committee? Dennis? Where's the well on that property now? Uh, good question. Oh, the well is immediately in front of the house and on the sketch, it, it shows it's marked on there. So it's just the well is immediately in front of the, uh, of the house being severed. All right. And then the septic system's all in back. The septic, yeah, and it's shown on the sketch. The septic system is to the south of the house. Uh, towards the uh, west side of the uh, of the lot being severed. Okay, uh, I've just got a question. The, the septic inspection was a little bit light on information. Um, so one of the conditions that the township said is that you've got to make sure that the sewage system is confined to the lot line. So is that the existing one or is that a new one? Because I think that my guess is that system is quite old. Uh, no, actually, the house itself is not as old as, as the previous one. Uh, the township uh, goes out and uh, uh, they inspect the system and they make sure that the, uh, the system is on the lot uh, uh, that's been, been being severed. Um, and uh, they, they rely on in this case, it was done by, I think, Van Gorps, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. Yeah, and he also said that he doesn't take any responsibility once he leaves the property. Which well, is that's in terms of it easy. not working. Uh, yeah. he, he's responsible for the fact that it worked on the day that he was there and that the septic tank is, uh, or septic tile bit is where he says it is. Yeah, so it's not up to the township to certify or confirm that it's within the lot, so it's up to you. So how will you do that? Well, what we do is we get to Van Gorp uh, to confirm that, and that's pretty standard, uh, actually, on all the severances in Malahide. Uh, they go to the they go to the lot and uh, uh, they put a uh, metal rod down in the in the ground to determine where the uh, tile bed ends. Uh, they've been doing that consistently for as long as I've been doing this, so it's like yeah. 17 years. Surprise! Surprise! He didn't do that on the initial inspection. Well, uh, when any of the inspections I have been on with with uh, septic installers, that's what they tend to do is, is to put down a, a rod. Obviously, it's kind of hard in the wintertime, but uh, in the summertime, put a, a rod down and, and determine where the tile bed ends. Again, that will be, that has to be verified. It's a condition of the, uh, of the uh, township of Malahide, so. Nancy, you want to do your? Yes, so um, the subject site is within the agricultural designation of the Elgin County Official Plan. The County Official Plan contains policies related to lot creation on lands in the agricultural area. New lots may be permitted if the local official plan supports their creation and if the lot is considered surplus to a farming operation as a result of a farm consolidation. In this particular case, the applicant has indicated that the principal residence for the consolidated farm owner will be uh, 10484 Springwater Road, um, and that th therefore this uh, lot will be surplus to the farming operation. As detailed previously, um, 
The property, uh, sorry, the county supports this application for consent, therefore, and provided it meets the policies of the local township of Malahide official plan and the provisions of the local zoning bylaw. The township of Malahide also supports this application and has no objection. And they've asked for the following conditions that all outstanding work orders or bylaw enforcement issues be resolved to the satisfaction of the chief building official. That the applicants initiate and assume all planning costs associated with any required official plan or zoning amendment, minor variance, or other land use planning process as, re as is required. Confirmation that private sewage system be confined entirely within the boundaries of the newly created parcel. And that's it. And the county engineer had no comments as this is not on, the county has no concerns. Uh, the only other comment that was received was from Navigation Canada, which indicated they had no issue uh, with the application. You can only assume that it's because there is an airport in the vicinity or something. Yes. Actually, it's a uh, uh, navigational aid is actually located on the retained lands. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Okay. Well, they have indicated they have no issue and no condition. Okay, if no other comments, John Andrews, that's moved. Marianne seconded. Rosemary. Rosemary. <laughs> Close. It was. Marianne Rosemary. <laughs> what can I say? Okay, I'll a vote. Andrews? Yes. Fleck? Yes. O'Grady? Yep. Kennedy? Yes. Selden? Yes. Ben Casteran? Yes. Aldred? Yes. Motion carries seven to nothing. Okay, the decision rendered today for application E1520 be circulated within 15 days after the notice. There is a 20 day appeal period from the giving of the notice of decision in which any person or public body may appeal the decision or any conditions imposed. No appeal is received within 20 days of the giving of the notice. The provisional consent becomes final. The applicant has one year to meet the conditions imposed and submit the necessary documents for certification or the consent will lapse and a new application will be required. Please leave the identification signs in place until the appeal period ends, after which they can be removed. If you'd like to be notified of today's decision, request a copy by contacting Nancy Passato at npasato at elgin.ca. A copy of the comment package is also available upon request and includes all correspondence received. Thank you. Okay, thank you for joining us and giving us the information on that. Yeah, um, I got one more later on, so I will join you then. Thanks. All right.
Mr. Chairman, I wonder if I could ask you a question. Can you hear yes. me? Yes. Um, this is my second meeting, as you know, and I don't like this at all. I think next meeting I'm going to be present in the chamber. <laughs> yeah, that's good. It's a good idea. Is, We'd like to is, see what you actually look like in real life. <laughs> <laughs> is there room in the chamber, uh, in the meeting room there for me to attend next meeting? Do you know? Um, through you, Mr. Chair, I'm not sure. I think we're at capacity right now. We're, we may have to have another oh, meeting yeah. room. What I want what I understand, there's going to be video linking between the two rooms, so there, that will be an option for the next meeting. I just don't think it's set up as of yet. So we may have to move several members into a different room and still have that video link. Unfortunately, I don't think we can have, because I have to be in the room, so we'll need to figure out who's where, basically. Right. Okay. Okay. It was worth a try. Yeah, if you want to attend, by all means. Um, we'll just need to shuffle and ensure that we're uh, uh, spaced accordingly. And that might mean that some several people may be in another room. Is, is there still a limit on the number of people? Yeah. 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 10. Um, but uh, if you can't be, if you cannot be socially distanced, then you would need to wear a mask. So. I suppose we could also consider um, wearing masks. Someone did that care. one. It's got to be off. Yeah. We, have, yeah. we have two on that, that side. Why six feet more. right there? Don't. Yeah. yeah, we we just need to make sure because you know, yeah. I know council has been meeting in here. I'm just not sure how many have been actually attending. I don't think they've had capacity as of yet. Like they haven't had their full slate of people show. So. Um, we'll discuss it for the next meeting. So, Mr. Van Craster and. By all means, we'll make sure for the next meeting. Yeah, we'll be we'll away. Make I just don't know what it looks like yet. But <laughs> like, all right, for future reference, Nancy, it's a tongue tier, so just call me Jack. Jack. <laughs> Jack, uh, it's uh, John Selden uh, here. Listen, uh, while you were offline, we had a vote, and we voted you out of the out of. The <laughs> <laughs> so I, I thought I should let you know that. <laughs> well, that's good. I'm voted off the island. Way to go. No, no, we'll do that to Jack. That's all right. Well, if if I still have to be on uh, video, then I might as well stay home and be try to be on video, which I'm not today. I don't know why. But anyway, we're getting by. Yeah, we'll figure it out, uh, Jack, for the next meeting, whether that's all in one room. A separate, so you'll know ahead of time, so that way you can make the decision. You know that kind of thing. Okay. Okay. Well, sounds good. Guy there, you'd be fine. Well, there's another one there. I think council puts four at the back. Yeah, there. I thought they did too. Maybe that's it. Well, because there's two, four, six, seven of us. You would be eight. Uh, just hopefully it's that. it's that. I don't know if that's enough of a. Oh yeah. Oh. So he might have to move over a little bit. Just. Either way, you can check. Yeah. It. I'm sure that by the next meeting. <laughs> They'll have council will probably have met and then they've worked out any kinks as to where people sit. All right, it was worth the discussion and I would appreciate yeah. you looking into it. Yeah. Ford's supposed to make an announcement next week. Yeah. Right now. Yeah. We got lots of time. Okay, I guess we're at the time we can carry on to the next ones. Is there a representation with us for the Sophia Unin? I hope I pronounced that right. Application. Is it John, is it John Sanders? Morning, John Sanders. I'm here as uh, the appointed agent for Sophia Bunin, the applicant, and I practice law in the County of Elgin. Okay, thank you. Application E1620 for Sophia Bunin for consent pursuant to Section 53 of the Planning Act 1990 as amended to sever lands municipally known as 5057 Fifth Line. Legally described as lot of part 10, concession five, the township of Southold. The applicant proposes a several lot with a frontage of 70 meters along fifth line by a depth of 130 meters in an area of 0.91 hectares or 2.27 acres. We propose to create one residential lot surplus to a farming operation. The purchaser Luke's Farms Limited is retaining 46.01 hectares 
or 113.71 acres containing one barn to be demolished to remain in agricultural use. So if you would like to just give us an overview of this application to the committee, please. Thank you very much. Uh, just for the committee's um, information too, um, <laughs> present at the hearing virtually this morning um, are the intended eventual owners of the property that we're seeking to sever, um, Nicholas Kirkfield and Andrea Kirkley. And uh, the applicant, uh, I'm hopeful, will join us. I haven't seen that happen uh, as far as my technology shows yet. Mrs. Bunin uh, is certainly making the decisions on the application, but um, like a lot of us, and I did follow the recent discussion you just had, uh, finding some aspects of technology challenging. Um, I, I will express appreciation though for the opportunity to, to start meetings and, and have them this way, picking up on the Times Journal headline this morning, you know, we still have to stand on guard. And I heard discussion about how this could be done in a real hearing, but for the time being, thank goodness we can proceed and thank you for taking the trouble to accommodate this form of hearing. So this is based on, of course, the provisions in the provincial policy statement, which um, allow severance of a residential lot in a agricultural area, and this is a prime agricultural area, I would say, um, for creation of a separate lot to accommodate an existing house that is surplus to the needs of the owner of the remainder of the farm. And has has been explained, the property is under contract, and I, I believe a copy has been supplied with the application to uh, Luke's Farms. Uh, Mr. Luke's has not joined us this morning, although when I saw it was raining, I thought he might. But um, William Luke's or, or a family company will be uh, the owner of the farm property uh, by the time this severance would be implemented to meet the requirements. In the situation, um, the design of the lot that would, we'd hope to sever has been carefully considered and, and limited. Um, the proposed configuration, um, and I should say that with the sketch that's there, despite our efforts, they're, they're, you're seeing a sketch that puts it more or less to scale, and then the other sketch that shows more detail of the lot, of course, is definitely not to scale, um, and you have to always have those things in mind. But the uh, proposed purpose here is, is to create a lot that suits the house and the residential use. Um, it has meant deciding to do away with almost all outbuildings on the property except for a tiny garden shed, whereas presently there, there's a set of farm buildings. Um, the plan is that those would be removed, including one that until a few years ago accommodated sheep. And the um, property uh, also is located on a farm. I think the original builder of the house, which I understand was back in 1882, picked a place of prominence for this house and built a house accordingly. It's not a gigantic house, but the architecture of it is very striking and so is the location. So to some extent, the, the shape and size of the lot is taken to accommodate the setting on a rise of land um, that was once surrounded by the, the remainder of the farm that was included uh, with it then. And of course, in the, in the care that the Bunin family have uh, put into maintaining and improving the property since uh, it came into the Bunin family, um, Mrs. Bunin and her late husband, in uh, 1974, um, they have planted a number of trees which are now quite mature and have a tremendous canopy over the whole lot. Uh, it's, it's really a striking setting and I'm sure that uh, those of you who were able to take an opportunity to 
drive by the site in the last few weeks would would note that it's a, a property that is beautifully set, well maintained, and has a although um, the provincial policy statement speaks of cultural heritage, it's not designated or anything, but it certainly is an item that the countryside can be proud of, and it would be wonderful to preserve it in that setting. So those are considerations that were taken in in choosing to set the dimensions and the outlines, practical considerations also um, to accommodate a septic uh, system, a private septic system that uh, was located and inspected prior to the application and has to be within the boundary line. And on the other side, the west side of the dwelling, um, there is a line of hydro poles coming in uh, from the road. So other than that, I. I do believe there's no question it fits within the definition of the surplus farm dwelling. You may have looked at, of course, the the list of numerous farms that the Luke's family owns in Southold and Dunwich, and and of course, they have dwellings on a number of those farms because they have a number of family members involved in their farming operations. But they certainly don't need another dwelling, and and uh, so I think there's certainly no question of those grounds. Thank you. <laughs> Any comments, questions from the committee members? John? I, a question about the septic uh, report, um, and I'm quoting, it seems to be working. That, that seems a little weak. The, uh, I, I thank the, for that question. Uh, I think uh, from my experience, the, the reports I've seen from the particular a uh, qualified person who inspected this one are often quite succinct. He, he's not a person of many words. Um, as to my knowledge, the process that was followed included pumping out the tank um, prior to the immediately prior to the inspection so that he could observe certain things that they do in their testing and so on. And um, I guess being uh, uh, you, know, you know in touch with the family members, uh, uh, whether he gathered information there, but certainly there, there didn't seem to be any steps missed uh, in what he did to appraise the uh, the working order. Okay, Nancy, if you want to read your comments there. So this application um, is within the agricultural designation of the Elgin County Official Plan. The county contains policies related to law creation on lands in the agricultural area. As detailed, um, the applicant has indicated that the retained lands are to be consolidated with other farmlands owned by the applicant, with the principal residence located at 35682 Scotch Line in Port Stanley. The severed lands are of a sufficient size to accommodate the single detached dwelling, shed, and private septic system. The county supports the application for consent, provided it meets the policies of the Township of Southhold Official Plan and the provisions of the local zoning bylaw. The Township of Southwold provided comments. They are also uh, recommending approval of the consent, provided the following conditions are included. The proposed severed and retained parcels will be rezoned. That a septic system assessment be conducted on the proposed severed parcel to ensure that the lands are suitable for a privately owned and operated septic system. That the barn on the proposed retained parcel be removed to the satisfaction of the township. Drainage reapportionment and pavement therefore that a mutual agreement drain be provided, that all financial obligations to the Township of Southwold be paid in full, that an electronic copy of the registered survey has been provided to the Township, and that the solicitor provides an undertaking that a copy of the registered deed for the severed parcel once a transaction has occurred will be provided to the Township. And I don't believe that the county engineer had any comments as well. Um, not on a county road, so there is no comments from the county engineer. Okay. I guess I'm not familiar with this property. I'm just, I'm looking at the size of the acreage, which has been a question before the committee. Is any committee members have any input on that? Uh, I, to keep the house and the, the trees, basically, can't be made much smaller. It's not a problem with size. Okay. John? Uh, the, the issue that one of my first comments was that it's too large, but I, I, 
if we're to understand Mr. Saunders, it's a unique piece of property. Do we do we then uh, let that go because it's particularly unique? Where I, Ian, I know it, it's this is an issue that with lots that you've been particularly um, clear about, and and uh, I think you've been right. But perhaps this is a property that that warrants the larger size. As far as I'm concerned, Mr. Chairman. I've driven by a number of times and with the trees and the way the, the well is and but they have a water system and they have another little shed system over there. It's it's close. Okay. To me, it looks like the line's gonna be close to that tree line and you don't want to destroy trees. No. And the house, I think John said, is set, set back quite a ways. It's not close to the road, it's back in the farm quite a ways. So some of those are sometimes, but it's just over two acres, which I think is, it's when you get three and four. John? I, just as a follow-up, quick question on that. Is the, there is a barn that's going to be removed, is that correct? Out in the field. Yeah, it's that barn that's showing in the field that's gonna be removed, is that correct? Uh, yes, uh, that's an intention uh, that uh, we anticipated it might be a requirement for minimum distance. Uh, we feel otherwise the property meets the minimum distance because any of the other barns in the area are, are no different uh, before or after the severance, but um, it is intended to remove that. And because they don't uh, suit the Luke's needs, uh, they don't need additional buildings back in the field there. So um, as I say, it means that they're, they're kind of denuding the, the farmstead from all the places to park a vehicle or anything, but that's the way uh, to reduce the size a lot, cut the back off it, remove all those buildings. So they're, they're planning to be uh, demolished. And I yeah. think that the, the report from Southold took that as a given. Um, I'm not sure whether that is uh, specifically uh, mentioned as a condition in the way that you would want it or not. Yeah, council addressed it. Yeah, it has been addressed that is, uh, yes. You, Mr. Chair, it was it's one of the conditions that's one of the conditions. Yeah, I feel that it has been recognized there. I would point out, um, in all honesty, that that we expected another condition, and it uh, it would be a simple one, but I, uh, there's a there's a slight um, oversight in Ms. Er, uh, Ms. Jane's report of, from Southold and. Uh, page three, the third paragraph, and when we're speaking of access and um, the existing driveway would consider continue to be the access for the residential lot, the severed parcel. The remaining farmland, um, it's been requested that there be two driveways by the farmer and that's a matter we'll work out with. It, it does appear that's possible. Presently, there are no other driveways on that property. In fact, there's fencing um, along much of the frontage because of not too long ago, um, sheep were raised on this farm. So I didn't want to mislead anything when there that uh, something will have to be done to make sure there's a proper entrance from the township road to the agricultural land. And the, because of the shape of the property, it's proposed there'd be, be two of them, but one would at least would be a requirement, I would think. Yes, uh, I, that's something between uh, you and the municipality, I think, but I'm surprised, as you say, it's not a condition in there. It, it, on our little sketch, it did show that they were proposed access points, but someone may have glanced at that and assumed that we were showing existing ones, but it, that's not the case when you go to see the property. That's up to them. Okay. Through you, Mr. Chair, we can recommend adding that type of condition, or we can just assume that the local municipality will likely take care of it through the one of the process have they have to go through. Because there will need to be, there'll need to be a rezoning as well. So yeah. certainly I think that through anything like that, that will be also be caught. So. Since Great. you're not here, Jack, do you have any comments, questions? Sorry, no, I do not have any, thank you. Okay. Moved by John Andrews, seconded by Ian Flack. Um, recorded vote. Andrews? Yes. Fleck? Yes. O'Grady? Yep. Kennedy? Yes. Selden? 
Yes. Van Castren? Yes. Aldred? Yes. Motion carries seven to zero. The decision rendered today for application E1620 will be circulated within 15 days after the notice. There is a 20 day appeal period from the giving of the notice of decision, of decision in which any person or public body may appeal the decision or any condition imposed. If no appeal is received within 20 days of the giving of the notice, the provisional consent becomes final. The applicant has one year to meet the conditions imposed and submit the necessary documents for certification or the consent will lapse and a new application will be required. Please leave the identification signs in place until appeal period ends, after which they can be removed. If you would like to be notified of today's decision, please request a copy by contacting Nancy Passato at npasato at elgin.ca. A copy of the comment package is also available upon request and includes all correspondence received. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Okay, thank you for joining us. <laughs> you brought a sleep on us? No, Steve, we haven't heard from him in a while. I don't know if he's sleeping. <laughs> I'm listening intently. <laughs> good. They probably voted you off the island too, Steve. <laughs> yeah, you and me, Jack. Yep. What is that? Redemption Island? Is that what they call it? The <laughs> Steve and I are having a, a, a private chat. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Talking about all you people. <laughs> all good. Better be. Are we ready, Chairman? We're all ready. It's 11.30. As soon as I find the right page here, we're ready. <laughs> okay. Do we have, represent, have representation here for the estate of Larry Hall application? Yes, it's Mike Hall. Okay. Welcome, Mike. Application E-1720, the state of Larry Hall for a consent pursuant to section 53 of the Planning Act 1990 is amended to sever lands municipally known as 29548 Pioneer Line Municipality of Dun Dunwich. The applicants propose to sever a parcel of land with a frontage of 54 meters by a depth of 18 meters and an area of 900 square meters or 0.24 acres to add the adjoining residential lot to the south. The owners are retaining 13.5 hectares or 33 acres containing one house, two barns and two outbuildings to remain in agricultural use. Could you please give us a brief overview of your application, Mike? Yes, we're just asking this severance uh, more or less to square up the property boundaries with the neighbor next to us on the west side. The property of the new planning act is probably going to be zoned industrial, so we'd like to put a, a three car garage on that section of property and kind of put a buffer between us and the industrial zone. Okay, thank you. Nancy, if you want to read your. Um, the subject plans are. Uh, designated as a tier one settlement area in Dutton, in the Elgin County official plan. Uh, the application is to sever and convey the proposed lands to 29528 Pioneer Line. Uh, the official plan contains policies with regards to boundary adjustments to existing lots, provided no new building lot is created with regards to that. Uh, the proposed severance application, excuse me, meets the policies of the county official plan and the county of Elgin supports this application for consent, provided the severed lands merge on title with the adjacent property. It should be a condition of consent that the subject lands are deeded in the same name and interest as the abutting lot and that section 50 sub 3 of the Planning Act applies to the, any future consents. Um, the county of Elgin, um, the engineer had no concerns. And as per the resolution of uh, the municipality of Dutton Dunwich, uh, they have 
also support the application and have asked for the following conditions. That a zoning bylaw amendment is in force and effect for the severed parcel, that a septic system review for the severed parcel has been completed, that a municipal drain reapportionment have been completed, that two hard copies and one digital copy of the registered survey have been provided, taxes are paid in full, that all Dutton Dunwich planning application fees as set out in the fees bylaw are paid, that the solicitor provides an undertaking that a copy of the registered deed for the severed parcel uh, be provided to the municipality and that the lots merge on title. And those are the only conditions. Thank you. Thank you. Questions or comments from the committee members? John? Um, just a question to the applicant. The, uh, the, the size of the, um, the boundary change, why not take it all the way to the, uh, I guess that's to the east or to toward uh, yeah, the uh, east. road? Why leave that little notch above there? Is there a reason for that? There's a, about a two meter distance between, there's a small two car garage yeah. on the existing house property. Yeah, yeah there is a, it's, there's a two car garage there. So this is easier to make it look better for the house that's on the other side of the lane. Okay, thank you. Mr. Chair? What's that line, that white line running through from building to building? Did you hear that question, Mike? That is uh, a three, three board white fence. Oh. Okay. Yes, that's a board. I thought it was something else. No. All right, thank you. Any other questions, concerns? Okay, Ian moved. Dennis second. Okay, recorded vote. Andrews? Yes. Fleck? Yes. O'Grady? Yep. Kennedy? Yes. Selden? Yes. Ben Casteran? Yes. Oliver? Yes. Motion carries seven to zero. The decision rendered today for the application E1720 will be circulated within 15 days after the notice. There's a 20 day appeal period from the giving of the notice of decision in which any person or public body may appeal decision or any condition imposed. If no appeal is received within 50 days of the giving, within 20 days of the giving of the notice, the provisional consent becomes final. The applicant has one year to meet the condition imposed and submit the necessary documents for a certification or the consent will lapse and a new application will be required. Please leave the identification signs in place until the appeal period ends, after which they can be removed. If you would like to be notified of today's decision, please request a copy by contacting Nancy Passato at npasato at elgin.ca. A copy of the comment package is also available upon request and includes all correspondence received. Thank you. Thanks, Mike, for joining us and uh, enlightening on us on your application. Thanks for <laughs> passing the application. A couple of minutes. Yeah, we got five minutes. I came up with fifty days when I'm standing here looking at twenty.
we got lots of room to put people on either side here. Yeah, I don't think there's any problem with having six feet right there myself. Even if you're still only allowed 10, kick out the techies. That's right. right. Because if he wasn't there, <laughs> we'd be okay. That all should be back there anyway. Yeah, I agree. Because the camera should be up there. Where's the camera on your side? Like that's the camera pointing our way. Where's the camera? There's on? none on, there's none. none on you? They can't get the rotating one to work. So I don't mind at all. That's a rotating one there, is it? Yes. As long as it's on the chair, that's what you need, right? Pardon me? As long as it's on the chair, that's what you need. It's not going anywhere, are you? Not going anywhere. Not spending any money? I know. You're not? I spent thousands since this COVID. <laughs> Repairs of the house? No, tires for my car, tires for my truck, tires for the big tractor. My friend. My friend. Get it on. Because my husband has a John Deere 2130. And he needs it all to get the car. All. Yeah. Fancy pool, in ground, cement. They were terrible. Or I think it was. Impressed stone all around. Because Ray Anderson had it before <laughs> George. That was like a. I got a good price on him, but my daughter. It wasn't an easy job because the guy did it right in the barn. He, I didn't have to take it to Elmer Tire. Yeah. That'd give me room too, because the calcium in it. Yeah. I didn't put calcium back in him for what I wanted to do. What's your business down there? But I don't know. How do you take that? What's, what's everything selling? In the name. You didn't price them high enough then. Chris Lab. Yeah. Yeah, so I don't know how you have it. For you, or they have to come in with today's world? Uh, we have a, uh, I don't think you can do it. I don't think Because that's, we've had farms tried this side, and we have to make sure that we've got them in different things. You must, you must find it tough to know what to order for next year. Because what's going to happen is going to go going up. Right. 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 But now they're one. Now they're one. Really? He wasn't at this. I heard that. One of the kids had trusted the name. Her name. I know, like, John Chapleton was saying, my sister wasn't on the farm. That's your baby. Yeah. Oh, I'm not his lawyer. <laughs> I have enough trouble with my own lawyer without worrying about somebody else's. Outside. I think with you know the uncertainty and everything else, you, you kind of would still your twenty five thousand. I think get rid of five years because I've paid my life about half. I keep sending us letters, all impact and all that. It's going to be in one deal. My lawyer, her lawyer. You know, I can say this probably like, hey, we got everybody back here. It's time. Let's find something to do, something to bomb. Yep. Have we got representation with us on the application for Cornelius Harms? Yes, you do. Uh, Dave Rowe, I'm here. All right. Good enough, Dave. Thank you. Application E1820, Cornelius Harms for consent pursuant to Section 53 of the Planning Act as amended to sever lands municipally known as 55486 Vienna Line, Village of Vienna. Legally described as lots five, six, and seven north of King Street, west of Center Street, registered plan 54, municipality of Bam. The applicant proposes to sever a lot with a frontage of 33.56 meters along Vienna Line by a depth of 49.1 meters in an area of 1,573.3 square meters or 0.389 acres, containing two sheds, one chicken coop, Proposed to create one new lot for residential use. The owners are retaining 2,206.8 square meters or 0.55 acres containing one dwelling and a shed proposed to remain <coughs> residential use. So David, if you could explain this to us a little bit, please. Yeah, the property is located in the former village of uh, Vienna. Uh, the Area is uh, fully serviced sewer, municipal sewer and water and uh, stormwater. Uh, what they're proposing is to sever the vacant uh, 
this easterly part or westerly part, excuse me, of the property to create another building lot, they will have to uh, put in sewer water uh, laterals uh, to service the lot, uh, as well as a lot grading plan. Um, again, it's a fully serviced lot within a uh, residential area. Uh, uh, really quite quite straightforward. Uh, they will remove the uh, buildings that are on the uh, parcel to be severed uh, as a condition of, uh, of the uh, consent uh, requested by BAM, uh, and then uh, uh, proceed to install the servicing, at which time then the lot uh, con uh, conditions will be satisfied and the lot can be, uh, be severed, uh, proposing to uh, uh, have a new house built on the uh, lot to be severed. That's kind of it in a nutshell. Okay, thank you. Nancy, if you want to read your report. Okay. The subject lands are designated as a tier one settlement area in Vienna in the Elgin County official plan. Full municipal services are generally available and new development is encouraged. Um, the proposed severance application meets the policies of the county official plan and the county of Elgin supports the application for consent. It is recommended that the land division committee include the following conditions that the municipality confirms that there is sufficient reserve sewage treatment capacity and water treatment capacity to service this residential development. The county engineer had no comment as it is not on a county road. The municipality of BAM also supports this application and requests the following conditions installation of a municipal water system connection to the severed lot. Installation of a municipal sanitary sewer connection to the severed lot at the landowner's cost. Provide engineered stormwater management, drainage and, in and grading plans. Removal of the chicken coop and two sheds from the severed lands. Purchase of a civic number sign for the severed lot. Provide a digital copy of the registered plan of survey. Cash in lieu of parkland dedication fee to the municipality and a planning report fee payable to the municipality. And those are all the conditions. Okay, thank you. Any questions, comments from the committee members? John. Um, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Dave, uh, a couple of things. One, through uh, Nancy, you addressed those signs uh, and, and changed the signs and sent in a picture of that. I just wanted to thank you for addressing that so quickly and for getting the picture in. Um, yeah, uh, that works pretty good, uh, getting the pictures. Just uh, in some cases, I, you know, I, I'd like to just have the owner put up the sign because it saves him the cost of me coming and doing it. But the downside is sometimes uh, the signs don't go up where they should be. So uh, you can't win sometimes for losing, but uh, no, that was no problem at all, actually. And and I do have an actual question as well. But, um, uh, the BAM suggested, I don't think they made it a condition, but they suggested that those connections for water and sewer be done before the resurfacing is done on Vienna line. You know, if your client is looking to do that before the resurfacing is done? Yes, actually, I spoke to Margaret Underhill at BAM about that. My understanding is it's going to be done right away. So that makes sense because uh, uh, you don't want to rebuild the road, put the asphalt down, and then uh, come back uh, a few weeks later and rip it up. So, yeah, exactly. Well, yeah, in fact, it's going to be done in September. So, if it's going to be done soon, that's great. Thank you. Yeah, I got to pass that on to my client to to get to get them to do it uh, as quickly as they can. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions, concerns, comments? If not, any want to take a direction on this? I'll make a motion. We approve. Very motion. John Seldon will second. Recorded vote. Andrews? Yes. Fleck? Yes. O'Grady? Yes. Kennedy? Yes. Selden? Yes. Van Casteren? Yes. Aldred? Yes. Motion carries seven to zero. Decision rendered today for application E1820 <coughs> will be circulated within 15 days after the notice. Is a 20 day appeal period from the giving of the notice of decision in which any person or public body may appeal the decision or any condition imposed. If no appeal is received within 20 days of the giving of the notice, the provisional consent becomes final. The applicant has one year to meet the conditions imposed to submit the necessary documents for certification or this consent will lapse and a new application will be required. 
Please leave the identification signs in place until the appeal period ends and after which they can be removed. If you'd like to be notified of today's decision, please request a copy by contacting Nancy Passato at NPASATO at Elgin.ca. Copy of the comment package is also available upon request and includes all the correspondence received. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. All right. Thank you, David. Thank you. Till next time. Has a lot of these applications. I take. He has three on here. So everything yeah. east of St. Thomas, right there. Malahide and Bam for sure. Homestretch. I don't need to ask. That. I'm curious. On the next one, on the sketch map, it says Ontario Hydro easement abandoned. There's towers are left, but there's no cables on. But three years. So is it still is this an active easement though? I don't care where the towers are, but it says the easement's you can't have an easement that's abandoned. It's either active easement or it's an illegal. All I'll say is, is it's between all the farms trying to get it straightened up. It's been three years abandoned. The towers are all there, all the way across. The wires are gone. That's an illegal easement across. I actually had a call from someone who's looking at, I guess they had it secured the hydro. It's actually some of these lands are owned by hydro, so it's a strip. And I guess they were inquiring about adding it to their land. So I think hydro is now starting to. It's, it's slowly starting to sell it or some sections of land. Some sections of land, it's an easement. Right. And they're going in circles. Yeah. It's like the greenhouse past the top of there. No. Then all that greenhouse was all on hydro property. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know whether it was. Better, but I think it's still, still have the easement. Go through our property. Our website. If he's, they've taken the they had an easement. So it's abandoned. They don't use it, but they're still holding the easement because they haven't decided when they're going to tear the towers down. Yeah. Because they have to have the easement to get in to tear the towers down. Yeah, it's almost not. You shouldn't say it's abandoned. Somebody doesn't know. They think, well, okay, the easement's no longer there. Well, in fact, the easement is still there. And as a farmer who has to go around those towers, I wish they'd get rid of them. Yeah. <laughs> so does every farmer in this county. They're taking that line down on Because there's a my son asked, so what happens if I use that angle and knock it down? I don't think you think of doing that. Just need a good ice cream. <laughs> I know that on title it would probably say something with respect to maybe the agreement itself. Well, everybody seems to have trouble finding any record of anything. Well, and that's maybe they don't want to. <laughs> how old these are and if they were really even I think it, it might was, have just been established by an R plan and no actual agreement. I think it was about 1945 that they took that. Yeah, yeah. So some lawyers have spent a lot of time in their offices and not yeah. find that. Yeah. Not I just, Especially if it's 45, that's almost that. that was a handshake deal and that was about it. When they moved the register. Yeah. Or it just got done and they didn't do anything. So. Hydra might be one of those people that can, they can install certain services. Do things with that kind of. Well, they don't have to ask for it. Right?
this protest and help Pete get into the room? The ball? To ask him to meet. Is that Mr. McCall? Yes, I, I hope the audio is working. Yes. Great. We legally got to wait about two minutes before we can talk to you. No problem. I'll say quietly. Mr. Chair, are these doors? Oh, I didn't bring them, John. No, they're not. <laughs> I can't take the home with me. Oh. If I had nobody else. Is that ever back in? <laughs> Take it on my side. It played me in some. Yeah. Actually, well, we have a minute. What happens for um, you know your time, the charging of that? Does it go to our finance department directly, or is it something? Secretary Treasurer is supposed to be doing. Susan always submitted. You always send in. How many? What the meeting was? They know our. They they know our mileage. They know our mileage. And you send in how many applications each? How many applications we review? Like for each. Yeah, I'll be calling one of you to explain this to me so I can make sure I do it correctly. I can scan and email you what. She says well, she normally it. does. Yeah, that'd be, do, do you want me to do that? That'd be wonderful if you have something like that. I do. That's I don't. The documentation from Susan's files are pretty sparse. I don't know. Uh, I generally think I know that you would submit a claim, but I'm not. Only when we it's automatically did. Yeah. So, Except when we attended conference, did it automatically? You guys, and then you can send your own check or whatever. Or direct deposit. Us a check to, to our bank. Yeah, the only we thing we had to ever had to submit was a conference or something. Yeah. Go to a conference. Yeah. Please. That's what I want to ask too. That one you sent for us attending for it says new counselors. Yes, it was. Can we attend that? If we're not counsel. It's online, and I I think let me take a look at it. I can't even remember who it was hosted. I think it was municipal. Yeah, it was. Right. It was the annual. I think yes. Association of municipal. So I'll take a look and see. But I'm fairly certain that. You probably can, and if that's the case, then we can work on that too. But yeah, let me, let me see. It'll be online for sure, but yeah, it is because I have it saved in my. Is <laughs> Amo Amo normally does just come for counselors? Okay, if you're with us still, Mr. McCollum, we can carry on here. Great, I'm here. All right, could you identify yourself to start with? Uh, sure, Alan McCollum. All right, thanks, Alan. Application E1920, Alan McCollum, for a consent pursuant to Section 53 of the Planning Act 1990, as amended to several lands municipally known as 32651 Aberdeen Line, legally described as part of Lot A, Concession 5, North of A, Municipality of Dunwich. The applicant proposes a several lot with a frontage of 56 meters along Aberdeen, Aberdeen Line with a depth of 90 meters and an area of 0.504 hectares or 1.25 acres containing one house proposed to create one new lot surplus to the needs of the owner. The owner is retaining 19.4 hectares or 47.94 acres proposed to remain in agricultural use. <clears throat> so if you could explain your application a little bit to us, please, Alan. Uh, sure. So I recently bought a, a farm with a house on it, and uh, and so sitting with two houses and and looking to uh, sever off um, this house on Aberdeen Line and uh, retain the the farmland. Um, I uh, so and you can see from the the aerial photo, I extended the back lot a little bit just to uh, to encompass the geothermal bed that's that's out behind, but um, otherwise I'm, I'm open to any questions, but that's the, the basis of the application. Okay. You read your report, sir, Nancy. So the subject site is the agricultural designation of the Elgin County official plan. The county official plan contains policy related to law creation on lands in the agricultural area. 
Uh, the applicant has indicated that the retained lands are to be consolidated with other farmlands owned by the applicant with the principal residence located at 10923 Iona Road. The severed lands are of a sufficient size to accommodate the single detached dwelling and the private systems. Um, the, the county supports this application for consent provided it meets the policies of the municipality of Dun Dunwich official plan and the provisions of the local zoning bylaw. The county engineer does not have any concerns as it's not on a county road. And the municipality of Dutton Dunwich also supports the application and has asked for the following conditions that a zoning bylaw amendment is enforced in effect for the severed and retained parcels, that a septic system review for the severed parcel has been completed, that a mutual drain agreement under section two of the drainage act has been provided to provide a legal drainage outlet for the newly created residential lot that two hard copies and one digital copy of the registered survey have been provided, that taxes are to be paid in full, that all Dutton Dunwich planning application fees set out in the fees bylaw be paid to the municipality, and that the solicitor provides an undertaking that a copy of the registered deed for the severed parcel, once the transaction has occurred, will be provided to the municipality. I don't believe there are any other conditions. Okay, any questions or concerns from the committee members? No. John? Uh, well, a quick question. Um, the uh, Dutton Dunwich chief building official was concerned about a, a boat potential barn use. Is that something that we should be concerned about? Apparently it's not being used now. So is that even relevant to the application? Um, I'm not aware. Of, so there's no barn on the property. The on the property. It's a neighboring. <laughs> um, so the closest Livestock barn is a 950 meters away. Okay. So that's fine then. Moving. Okay, so it's very straightforward. John Andrews moves. Second. Ian Fleck will second. I have a question, uh, Mr. Chair. Okay, Jack, question. Okay. Um, Alan, on your original application sketch, there is a it says there's a not in use well. Um, I'm just wondering, Mr. Chair, if that's a concern to be addressed by the uh, Land Division Committee or if that's to be dealt with by the municipality or maybe Alan could comment on that first. Um, sure. Got a comment on that, Alan? Uh, sure. So there, um, the, there is a, a well that, that never functioned very well at all on this property. But once the municipal uh, uh, water supply was installed, uh, it uh, it's no longer been been uh, used. That's is it, a dug well? uh, it is a dug well. Uh, yes, it's a shallow dug well. So is that, Mr. Chairman, a concern of the Land Division Committee or is that a municipal issue? to Ian. decommission unused wells. Ian has a com comment here. So, so far in any of them in Dun Dunwich is we've left the dug, the dug wells have been left there if people want to use it for garden use, but every road in Dun Dunwich has municipal water on it and all homes are hooked to the municipal water system. Okay, thanks for that clarification. And, and to this point, it's never been something that land division has done was uh, instruct closing a well or anything uh, Dennis you have a comment yeah just a quick question is it dry or is it still able to be used or is, it, is all the pipes there and if the uh, one? so so the the plumbing is there the pipe is there as I say it it was it was never a very good functioning well um it was that was a constant battle here so we were very happy to have municipal water come up Aberdeen line yeah um, I mean, my, own, my own perspective is that not a condition, but just get a properly decommissioned. That would be my suggestion. It's up to you. Sure. No, I appreciate that. Uh, and that I'll con certainly uh, consider that. Ian has a comment here. I believe it is all, anytime this has come up, is water issues or septic issues are strictly to the municipality to put in their, their I don't think it's well I agree that's why I'm not making it a condition and just a suggestion that it might just be the best just to properly decommission it. 
So that doesn't even need to go into the minutes. Right. So we have a motion to pass this with no further conditions imposed by us. So okay, I'll do a recorded vote. Andrews. Yes. Black. Yes. O'Grady. Yep. Kennedy. Yes. Holden. Yes. Van Casteren. Yes. Aldred. Yes. Motion carries seven to zero. Decision rendered today for application E1920 will be circulated within 15 days after the notice. There's a 20 day appeal period from the giving of the notice of decision in which any person or public body may appeal the decision or any condition imposed. If no appeal is received within 20 days of the giving of the notice, the proposal or the provisional consent becomes final. The application has applicant has one year to meet the conditions imposed and submit the necessary documents for certification or the consent will lapse and new application will be required. Please leave the identification signs in place until the appeal period ends after which they can be removed. If you would like to be notified of today's decision, please request a copy by contacting Nancy Passato at NPASATO at Elgin.ca. A copy of the comment package is also available upon request and includes all correspondence received. Thank you. Thank you, Alan, for joining us. All right, thank you very much for hearing my uh, application. Thanks, Alan. Thanks, bye. Okay, that's the end of our list here. Do we have anything else we want to bring up? Good. I have a question, uh, Mr. Chair. Yes, to, through you, if I could direct it to Nancy. Um, again, pardon me if it's a silly question, but you're new and I'm new. <laughs> um, the I annotate system was used um, to deliver all the information on the March meeting that was postponed. Um, this time it came from you, Nancy, through. Uh, regular email with a whack of attachments. I just wondered if that's going to be the new form or what? Uh, through you, Mr. Chair, I didn't even know that there was a system in place. <laughs> that would be helpful to know. I'll have to familiarize myself with it, obviously. Um, I'm assuming it's all on the iPads, which I don't have one, so I'm not sure what if I have to have one in order for this to be conducted or not. So I'll look into it for the next meeting. I appreciate it. Thank you. Usually it's sent out in PDF and then we just copy it till I annotate. There are systems as well that we could literally have a vote that everybody just votes on. I know certain councils, that's what City of London uses. So you can just literally vote on your iPad. Yeah, it makes it a lot easier than that. The recorded vote is automatically done instead of calling out. Anyways, I don't want to go down that road. If we already have something in place, sure we can use it the other stuff is probably expensive maybe but you can always look at it in the future so it's called the i annotate system does anyone know what it's called yes, yes. 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 I have. and a daughter so yeah the it staff know about it IT staff. Yeah. yeah i will ask it <clears throat> to put them on the spot or anything <laughs> and you had brought a concern up to nancy there um dennis and whether we want to talk about that at another meeting or not in regards to the options process. so options I, I just i never like people just flying stuff in amendments amendments changes minor major i i just don't like that it's just it's too much work for us and for staff so let nancy think about it come up with some ideas talk to you you've been in this game long enough <laughs> what aggravates you and what doesn't aggravate you so I think the two of you come up with something that might streamline some a lot of things aggravate me. <laughs> and I think it aggravates, I'll go back to it, but this measurement thing is coming from when people end up, oh, a surveyor won't come and do it. So they end up, they go out there with a big tape and they measure it. Yep. And we've had a number in the last year and a half yep. that have had to uh, do an amendment. I talked to a surveyor again the other day, and he says his, he's in, in London and he's behind by a year. Yeah. One year doing agricultural property. They just haven't got time. We have in, we have our, our surveyors now from almost Toronto doing the 401 right now. They're part of the 401. 
total that can do. Yeah, that's stunning. Oh, they just and COVID isn't going to speed anything. No. Just that's for sure. Yeah, you're right, Jack. It's for sure. COVID's slowing it down. Yeah, so it, it may take us a couple of meetings, a couple of go rounds, a couple of iterations to get something that we all like that's easy. Uh, small enough that we can download it without the computer going to mm -hmm. Well, since it's an actual you know, uh, software that you guys can be using, I'm assuming that would probably cut down on a lot of the size, too. Uh, so. Well, I know the files you sent through when I pushed to download, they disappeared. Yes. They weren't even in my download files. Yeah. yeah. So I literally, on my home computer, got it to download, sent it to myself here, got it. And well, for next time, we'll be able to hopefully... Do it yeah. that way. And, and welcome, Nancy. It's nice to meet you. Yes. Yes. It's all, nice to actually meet all of you. And it's the first time I've actually met people in person. So, well, a couple of staff. It's good. And I think you'll find out from IT. That's what we use it. Yeah. Yeah. It sounds like I got a lot to learn. So, uh, hopefully, for the next one, it'll be a little better. And Nancy, if you do get it, if you do convince these guys to give you an iPad, they hold them really tight. <laughs> I found an empty box in the office, in Susan's office. I thought, oh, great. And then I open it, it's empty. So I'm like, oh. But I think if you get one of those and you play around with sending emails to yourself on that, yeah. and see what we're seeing in, in our issues. For sure. Okay. So if, yeah, if nobody else has anything to say, we can find somebody to amend or adjourn. Adjourn. That's the word I'm looking for. <laughs> We don't want to amend this one. Yes. John Seldon. John Seldon. Sorry. And second. You don't need a seconder, but I'll second. Okay. I won't. Forever. We had two of his here. Okay. Fine. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Come on. You got better. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks. Have a good week, Jack. Thanks. Yeah, we'll do. Voted up to the island.